I'd like to read from Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 21, and it's Matthew's account of the triumphal entry of Jesus and his disciples into the city of Jerusalem, the day that we have come to know as Palm Sunday. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. And there Jesus sent two of the disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied up with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything, tell him, the master needs them, and then he will let them go at once. This happened in order to make what the prophet had said come true. Tell the city of Zion, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey. So the disciples went and did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt, threw their cloaks over them, and Jesus got on. A large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, Praise to David's son. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into an uproar. Who is he? The people asked. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The crowds answered. The events of Palm Sunday that are given to us by St. Matthew are an important part of our understanding of the most important week in the Christian calendar, that week that we now call Holy Week. The events of Holy Week are in some ways a, a tiny glimpse into the significance of the coming of Jesus into the world. And it's as if the whole ministry of Jesus and the importance of his coming amongst us has been shrunk into this one solitary week. Another way to look at it could be to see it as the ministry of Jesus happening all at once, with his coming into the city of Jerusalem being like his birth, coming into the world as a little child with all the joy and the excitement of a birth. And what happened after that is like a brief summary of his whole presence squeezed into that one amazing week, with his teaching being examined, criticized, and those who have disagreed with him developing their plans to be rid of him, rushing him into custody, arranging a mockery of a trial and dragging him to his death on the hill of Calvary. And then, of course, to the miracle of that first Easter day. I wonder if any of you remember an advertisement uh, on television where a couple are depicted as meeting for the very first time. And they are shown to have quickly developed their relationship with one another over no more than a minute or so. Their whole life together over in a moment from that first meeting, falling in love, getting married, and finally getting divorced. So what happened on that Sunday 
which began that first Holy Week. Well, that is where we must begin our Holy Week in the year of our Lord, 2020. We are told in the Gospels about the very first Palm Sunday. It has been described as a triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem. And the image that is projected by the Gospel writers is one of a holiday festival with a happy, joyful crowd turning up to welcome someone who is very important. Jesus of Nazareth, a preacher from Galilee, has become for the people of that small and rather significant part of the world, has developed an amazing reputation which it now seems has gone as far as the urban population of the holy city of Jerusalem. But does that mean that what Jesus has been preaching and teaching about has been accepted as authoritative? And does that mean that the people have turned their backs on the leaders of their traditional faith? Well, as we have clearly seen as that week progresses, that far from being convinced by Jesus, that welcome was based simply on the fervour of a crowd, a crowd which could be easily swayed the other way. Apart from the preparation which the Gospel tells about, how the disciples got the colt or donkey as we've come to know it, and how Jesus and his many followers made their way into the city. There is little else to say about the actual events of that triumphal entry. However, there had been comment from biblical scholars that the way that Jesus entered the city was a very symbolic setting. That Jesus came into the city like a king. A king who had returned victorious over his enemies, but not riding a war horse but riding a modest donkey. Jesus knew exactly why he had made that journey to the Holy City. And there would also be an element of human fear as he rode in seeming triumph through the gates of the city. Perhaps also there was an element of surprise at the welcome he was getting. Or was he fully expectant that this fickle crowd would soon change. The disciples had already shown their fear at the prospect of going to Jerusalem at this time. They had heard Jesus saying that it was to be a, a defining moment in his ministry and that it would eventually lead to his death. As they witnessed the welcome that they were now receiving, would their fears now be less acute? Would they be more confident? Would they be more assured that things were going to be all right? The humanness of the disciples is, of course, not something that is in question. Their feelings were most probably filled with a sense of relief. The anticipation of the reception that they might receive in that great city was now very different from what they thought. And now they had high hopes. Now their fears were allayed. Well, at least for the moment. It looked as if Jesus' arrival into the city was to be no more than a, a popular event. A bit like the arrival of a superstar as if Jesus was a significantly important person who had claimed the right to be treated this way and that the crowd which had laid their coats on his path and waved palm branches as he passed would be a source of support 
and protection, and that any real danger had now passed. The very next day, however, was to make a change, which was to hasten the opposition to Jesus and to lead that fickle crowd from shouts of Hosanna to cries of crucify him. And that change was significant. That change was so changed by the visit of Jesus to the holy temple. The temple was at the very center of the religious life of the Jews. It was the place where God was to be found. It was the place where the holiest of holies was established. And it was the place which identified the faith of Judaism and was accordingly revered. Jesus entering the ten temple overturned the tables of the money changers. He drove out those who were selling animals for sacrifice. He had to all intent and purpose committed a blasphemy in the eyes of that once welcoming crowd. Now was the opportunity for those who were plotting against him to make their move. As the week progressed, Jesus was to be involved in a violent reaction to what was happening in the temple. He was to be found arguing with the leaders and accusing them of being hypocrites. He was being accused of failing to keep the law of Moses. It was becoming obvious that what he stood for was becoming more and more unpopular with a widening proportion of the religious people of that city. And most importantly, those who had authority. The events of Palm Sunday don't perhaps tell us very much about Jesus himself, but I think they tell us more about people, about people and their reactions, about people and their reactions to Jesus and the things that he had to say. People like things to be easy for them. People like things that are easily understood. They like things that give them pleasure, that give them excitement, things that make them feel good. But when it becomes more difficult, when it becomes more complicated, when it becomes more challenging, then people tend to give up. I'm sure that all of us at one time or another will have planned to do something. But as we get started, we discover that, well, it's not quite as easy as we thought. And so eventually we abandon it. Often things require patience. They require determination perseverance and hard work. Jesus didn't arrive at the gates of the city of Jerusalem with a series of easy answers for people. He came to them with challenges and questions to ask of their lives and the way that they were living. Judas, one of his own disciples, shared the dissolution that eventually gripped that crowd and Judas Iscariot took his disappointment and the disappointment of the crowd and for the price of 30 pieces of silver condemned his master to the cross. And so by the end of that holy week the crowd joined in the cry of crucify him, crucify him. And so that Holy Week that seemed so full of excitement and joy was to end, it seems, with defeat. But we know that on Easter Day itself, that defeat 
was overcome by a stone rolled away from an empty tomb. All glory be to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.